Jenna yeah. Julie Harhart of the 183rd Legislative District located in Northampton and Lehigh counties. Today, um, we are here at the Lehigh Gap Center. Um, after a long time, about four or five years, I think we were here last. And uh, since we've been here, we've seen, I've, I see that there's a lot of changes that have occurred. And uh, we are here with Dan Kunkel, who is a director, and he is going to uh, explain um, all the changes that have occurred and um, later on uh, go on a tour and uh, go into the different various areas that you made these changes. And I, I always say this, Dan, I, I, you, if you want to say there is a man with a dream, you had it, and you are really living it, and uh, done a wonderful job. And some exciting things have really been occurring uh, up in this area. And um, 2014, you won an EPA award, yes. which I see you have that. You should show that. Yes. Something to be very, very proud about. about. And it's uh, um, the excellent EPA Excellence in Site Reuse Award. Do you want to explain that? Sure. Um, the uh, Superfund program that the United States EPA runs uh, had for years been going out and stabilizing toxic waste sites to protect the public, to protect people's health, and to protect the environment. And um, a few years ago, they decided that it wasn't good enough to just stabilize the site and protect people, but they wanted to start reusing those sites. We don't have any more new land being made, so they wanted to start rehabilitating the sites and reusing them. Mm -hmm. And so they instituted this award in 2014 in order to encourage people to do this. And they selected uh, each region of EPA. There are 10 regions of US EPA. Each region was allowed to give one of these awards. So we got the first award for region 10 of EPA, excuse me. We got the first award for region three of EPA for reusing a, a toxic site which is what we've done here at mm -hmm. Lehigh Gap Nature Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there used to be the uh, um, horse, horse head? The, yeah, the horse, head, horse head was the industry, but uh, it was the Palmerton Superfund site is what it was called, but Horse Head uh, Industries is, was the zinc company that, uh, uh, that polluted the, the landscape and caused the, the damage here. But, uh, but I always am quick to point out that that was a really good company that was very... Uh, very good to their community and, and the people mm -hmm. of Palmerton and the pollution happened before we had the ability to, to stop it. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the technology when they did this. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a malicious act. But so we, we set about fixing that, that problem mm -hmm. uh, by revegetating the mountain and uh, turned it into a nature center. And according to EPA, no one else anywhere has ever done this. We're the only environmental education center in the country that has been um, made out of transforming a Superfund site into the environmental education center. Wow, something to be really be very, very proud of. So when you of. say someone with a dream, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you, I always say, <laughs> maybe it was you, a have, you are the man who says, you know, I, 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 we know each other for a very long time and I've been with you through, this, through the inception uh, when you first started and um, I always say, you know, when you really want something, you have a dream. You are a man who had a dream and made that dream come true and living that dream. And that should get an award all in itself. Oh, so. <laughs> I'm not interested in awards. It's just, it's just good to be able to do it. I feel privileged to be able to do it. Well, you do a very good job. Um, can you tell me, um, you have a lot of, you know, grass, grasses and refuge around or how, how do you maintain all that? I mean, what do you do to keep that all under control? Well, the, uh, the grasses were the key to getting vegetation back on the mountain. Nothing else would grow, but we found that these, uh, that these warm season prairie grasses, is mm -hmm. what most people would call them, yeah. could grow here. And uh, that's what we planted all over the mountainside. But now as time is going on, uh, some trees are starting to come in and some invasive species are starting to come in. And the trees and the invasive species take the metals up out of the ground and bring them up into the food chain. Mm -hmm. The metals from the, from the air pollution are in the soil. And so these trees and, and other plants bring them up and the grasses do not. So EPA wants us to maintain it as a grassland. So in order to do that, we did something very unique last year. We set fire to 10 acres of the grassland in order to kill off the woody vegetation 
that brings those metals up out of the ground. And it killed those, those things, and the grasses came back better than ever uh, after we did that burn. Uh, the burn releases nutrients that the grasses need, and so the grasses, and these grasses, prairie grasses, are adapted to fire. Fire is a common occurrence on, the, on a pristine prairie. Lightning fires, uh, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so the grasses came right back, are doing really well. And so um, US EPA was very concerned about the fire because they were concerned that it would put metals up into the air in the smoke and that smoke could drift over to Sladington or Walnutport or Palmerton. And we, uh, we tested it and did a very extensive study and the smoke fell out very quickly and did not leave the site. And so EPA gave us permission to use fire on the mountain to manage it. And, and so we are de developing a fire management plan now. And so there will be periodic uh, prescribed fires on that mountain uh, over time in the coming in the coming years. Wow! And if they if you wouldn't do that, would that the grasses just keep growing? And the grasses earth? would get shaded out by the yeah. by the the small trees like the birch trees and things like that, and and eventually uh, trees would take over and and the other invasive species like the butterfly bush. Yeah. But the um, um, the fire just maintains it as a grassland, and that's the best for the toxic situation. Mm -hmm. If this were not a toxic site, we wouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. But because of, the, because of the metals in the soil and keeping them there, mm -hmm. that's why we're trying to manage it as a grassland. That's interesting. You also have a conservation landscaping program? Yes. Yes, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, we're really trying to encourage people to use native plants in their landscaping around their homes. We've been doing this for years, um, but we, um, last year, the um, director of the Lehigh Valley Community Foundation came around to all the different conservation groups and asked us, what kind of ideas do we have for conservation that we could all do together, all the conservation groups doing together? And I suggest that we do um, this conservation landscaping where we encourage people to plant native plants in their landscaping. And they liked our idea and so they are giving us $20,000 a year for five years to encourage this. So you used a native, right. okay. My, I think my husband would love that. Yeah, you, you don't have to mow the grass. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd um, love that. <laughs> um, in, in America we have more lawn than cornfields. Mm. We have over 40 million acres of lawn in America. Wow. And lawn is really uh, not very good habitat for much of anything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're encouraging people to, to maybe dig up part of their lawn and make it a habitat. What, what kind of plants are we talking about? What are We're talking about perennial uh, plants that grow up and flower each year. We're talking about shrubs that uh, get berries on them, things like that. We're talking about native trees. Uh, anything that's a, a plant that's, that grew here before uh, Europeans came here. We mm -hmm. consider that a native plant. It grew in the region. Um, also, something that you're doing with Ar Arbor Arboretum. The what, Arboretum. Please explain that. Yes. What is that? Yes. Uh, an Arboretum is a collection of trees and shrubs that someone has planted, woody plants. Most of the time you hear an Arboretum. Cedar Crest College has a wonderful Arboretum, for instance, where they have trees from all over the world planted on their campus, and they have them labeled so people can come there and see these different kinds of trees and learn about them. We decided that we wanted to have an arboretum, but a collection of native trees and shrubs to show people what is native here in Pennsylvania and what can you plant in your yard or in your um, pasture or whatever you happen to have uh, that would be good for here or for just to, for people to come and learn about it. So we have this collection of plants and uh, of trees and shrubs and paths through them. And the trees and shrubs are labeled so you can walk through there and look at them and learn about these different kinds of uh, plants that are native to here. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully people will get the idea that they want to use those kind of plants in their, in their yards. Yeah, now I understand what, you're, what, what, what this is all about here. Um, we are running out of time, so I'm going to have to uh, talk about you are working with the schools. And what yeah. exactly do you do with the schools? Well, we, we have a lot of field trips that come here. We've had, we had 4,300 students that came here in 2014. Um, they come from the surrounding school districts. And uh, um, 
we have uh, in-school programs also that we do. So sometimes we go into the schools and do programs as well. We try to help them meet the standards. All of our programs are developed with the teachers. Before, we don't just develop programs and say, come and get them. Mm -hmm. we, we go to the schools, we work with the teachers and develop programs that, that will help them accomplish the standards in science and, and ecology. So when they come here, the kids are learning things that they need to know on the PSSA tests, for example, or, or on the, uh, uh, what's the new one called? Keystone. <laughs> the Keystone exams, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's uh, valuable, they're valuable field trips for learning, and they're also an experience that the kids get to, uh, to be outdoors and maybe see a bald eagle or, or something like that, mm -hmm. and maybe inspire them to care more about the environment. And what we teach the kids really is, is this. We all need clean air. We all need clean water. We all need good soil to grow our food. And so that's our environmental education message. We need to take care of the planet so it can take care of us. Now I mentioned earlier uh, the changes that you made um, to the physical structure of, of the Venture Center here. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. I uh, believe the last time you were here, there were bare walls and so forth. Uh, we have finished our building. We have um, this multi-purpose room that we're sitting in here. I believe this is the first time it was a TV studio, but it, it has uh, yeah, served I many. I think I remember that. Yeah. It has served many purposes. <laughs> this is the first stop for the kids when they come here on a field trip. We might have a hundred second graders. They come in and sit on the floor, and we give them a quick introductory program before we go outside and go to the various stations that we that we go to. Um, we also downstairs have a lab uh, where we uh, use microscopes and things like that with the students. We have a library downstairs. Um, outside we have some decks and we have our native plant gardens outside as examples and the pavilion down there which the Rotary Club built for us. Uh, uh, and most importantly, we have two bathrooms, one for the males and one for the females and that seems to be what has brought us more field trips than anything else. We don't have porta potties anymore. <laughs> we have indoor plumbing, and so that is really important. So this building is not the Nature Center. I, I make sure to tell people that. The Nature Center is out there, but this building is a really important tool to help us do our educational programming and, and get the message out to the public um, about, uh, about the environment. Mm -hmm. It, it, it sounds very, very interesting. It's hard to believe it's here, you know, um, just right outside of, well, this is considered non, this is um, This is Washington, Washington Township, Township, right outside of Slatington. Right, right outside of Slatington, Washington Township, that we have this wonderful, wonderful nature center to take advantage of, I mean, really. And, and I'll add that um, since we came here, uh, other people have gotten the idea, and so the county put a boat launch down here by the bridge since we're here. Hmm. The DNL trail was, was uh, completed through here since we're here. Uh, up in East Penn Township in Carbon County, they put in a boat launch and they have a little park up there at that end of the property. So after we came here and people saw the potential of Lehigh Gap, not as a wasteland anymore, mm -hmm. but as a really important recreation area and a place to learn about the environment, uh, other people have Caught, caught on and contributed. So we get credit all the time for the DNL trail or that boat launch, but I tell people, no, that was Lehigh County or that was the DNL corridor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, uh, but, but the gap has become a really uh, important recreational area and learning area since we came here. Well, congratulations to you. I think you, you really deserve that, congratulations. Um, so great, um, why don't we um, close our program by you taking us on a little tour to see just what sure the, my pleasure your changes that you, we just talked about okay okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Dan coming in in to the building it's really impressive do you want to tell us a little bit about this sure. um, how this all evolved here I mean well what we tried to create here uh, when you come in the door we try to give you the impression that you're walking into Lehigh Gap yeah. so we have a photograph of that side of the gap on this wall. We have a photograph of the west side of the gap on that wall. And if you see at the bottom of the picture there, you can see the river. Mm -hmm. So we're actually standing in the river. Oh. And those are river rocks that we have there along the, the bottom of the, uh, the, the mural. 
And on this side, we have some of the rocks that would be from the mountain. These are jagged. The river rocks are rounded from being tumbled in the river. And the, the rocks up on the mountainside are jagged like this. Mm. And then, um, then we, have, uh, we have turkey vultures and red-tailed hawks soaring around above us. Uh, and then we have these three photographs showing what has happened here. Uh, we started with this barren moonscape in 2002. And then we used our grasses and, and brought vegetation back to the mountainside. And as you can see, we used a tractor here. We couldn't plant up here. It was too steep. Mm. But then we used airplanes to drop the seed up there. Oh, really? And then wow. by 2008, you can see that we had grass all over the, the area. Wow. And, and these dried grasses that we have here are, are some of the species of grass that we used up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. So this uh, um, allows us to teach people about these different species. And then over there are some of the, uh, the animals and insects and so forth that have come back since we, um, since we did all this. This is all things that have they come back They left and the they've refuge. come back. Yes. They have now come back. Yes. Mm -hmm. How about that? And bluebirds we, and what? Bluebirds, um, tree swallows, indigo buntings. Wow. Those are the three birds up there. And what's that little creepy crawly thing? <laughs> that's a that's a black swallowtail butterfly caterpillar. Oh really? Yes. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, very similar to that that black butterfly over there. That mm -hmm. black butterfly mm -hmm. is called a spice bush swallowtail. There's another one called the black swallowtail. That's the caterpillar of it. Okay, we're back here in the Great Hall where we were speaking a few minutes ago, and I'd just like to talk about some of the things that go on in here. We we have displays of raptor migration. Uh, up right now. We have that through the fall and winter because we do see a lot of raptors around here in the winter, so we try to educate people about that. Um, we also have weather stations over there. A professor at Lehigh University is collecting weather data here constantly, oh, really? which gets used all the time for our research. Oh. We, we compare the growth of the plants up on the, on the mountain with the, uh, with the weather reports or with the weather data that we've collected. And, mm -hmm. That way we can tell from year to year, uh, is the weather affecting this or is this something else that's causing us to, to grow the way things are? Mm. And back here we have six different photographs of yeah. habitats from around the refuge. All those photos were taken here and those are six different habitats. Uh, when we have um, a rainy day and a field trip, sometimes we do our habitat exploration inside with these <laughs> and we have, animals with magnets on the back that the kids can place on those because those pictures are printed on a piece of steel. And so they, their uh, magnets will stick to them. So like when I was a kid in Sunday school, we had a flannel board mm -hmm. and to tell stories. Well, I told our exhibit designers, I wanted a modern day flannel board. So <laughs> they made it out of steel and magnets. And so, so the kids can do that. And the kids. And you provide that. that. You provide the magnets. And oh yeah, we have the we have the pictures of the animals in that box right oh, there. Oh, right there. Okay. Yeah. And the kids stick them up on the on on there. Uh, we use this room for so many things. Uh, it's a nice room. We have uh, we have dinners in here. We have our speaker series. The lectures are in here. Mm -hmm. This year we have twelve speakers again, and uh, the, I believe you could get a master's degree coming to our speaker series. They're mostly college professors that do the, the talks and we really get a, a good attendance. We get anywhere from 20 to 50 people for our, uh, they're free, so uh, mm -hmm. people come out, we really have a good following. And they, and they lecture mostly about they the like, area, they have, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. Yeah, the like the geology of the Lehigh Gap was one of the topics recently or, you know, sometimes there are uh, issues, but mostly it's, it's uh, about nature or about their work, their research work. Mm -hmm. When we have a hundred second graders come for a field trip, we come in here first, they sit on the floor, uh, we show them a, um, a little introductory program so they understand what this place is all about before they go out and go to their various uh, field trip stations outdoors. I bet they enjoy uh, that. They do, they do. And it's nice to have a, a gathering point to start. A mm -hmm. As I said earlier, uh, the building is a really good tool. It's really important to have this, this tool. Um, mm -hmm to help us do what we do. And, and so, so this room really is, uh, functions for many, many different things. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's a really critical room that we have here. 
So this is this is the most important room in the building. So when was this room put in place? I mean, I've been, haven't been here since when, when did we say 2011? 2011. So then, well, that's when we opened up. That's when you opened it mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and we opened the downstairs a year later. We we built this as we had the money. We raised the money. We didn't want to be holding people's money. So as we raised the money for the building, we put up the shell when we had enough money to do that. And then when we had enough money to finish these rooms, we did the upstairs. And then when we had enough money to finish the downstairs, we did that. So we opened it in stages, but we, we wanted to show progress. Dan, I'm interested. Uh, uh, those silhouettes on the window, what, what are they all about? Well, those silhouettes are to make the place bird friendly. We made the building as green as we could with insulation and things like that and a geothermal heating and cooling system so that it's very efficient and very environmentally friendly. But windows kill birds. Birds see ref the reflection in the window and they fly into the reflection. They think they're flying up into the mountain or into a tree. It happens all the time. And so those, um, those silhouettes are contact paper uh, that's cut into the shape of hawks. It's not the shape that matters. Uh, we just cut it into shapes of hawks and birds so we can use it educationally. It's the silhouette but, itself that does. But it's, it's, out, it's on the outside of the glass. If you're outside looking at that glass, they're white and there's no reflection where those silhouettes are. So it breaks up the reflection and the birds don't fly into the glass. And our, at, when we raise the shade over here on the front window, you'll see we have them on there as well and we also get a, a view of the Lehigh River. Hmm. That's really interesting. And if I may just say this, we, have, uh, we, we had a tree in front of our house and this little bird, it would try to get into the window all the time. It must have hit that window a hundred times. I didn't know how to stop it. I really it, didn't. That, that was a bird that was seeing its reflection in the window uh -huh. and thinking it was another bird and it was trying to chase that other bird away. I know, it was amazing. I Cardinals there. do that more than any other species, but other, any bird can do it. I've seen robins do it, but right now I have a female cardinal that, that's at my patio door trying to chase that other cardinal away. Yeah, and but thank goodness it didn't hurt itself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, can we go downstairs? I know you have a lab downstairs, yeah. can we? Sure. You let's, lead the way? Let's go down. <laughs> okay. Dan, we are now in your lab, the mm -hmm. Nature uh, Gap Lab. What, what actually, what goes on here? What, what do you do here? Well, this is, a, a lot of things go on here. First of all, and most importantly with the kids, we, we uh, use microscopes in here, for example. When we do a pond study outside with the kids, then we bring in water samples and look at it under the microscope so they can see the little critters that live in the pond. So when we talk about pollution getting into a river, we can say to them, this is what gets killed. You're killing these things when you put that pollution in that river. That's why we don't want to pollute a river. So, wow. And they really get it. Uh, so so this is, that's one of the main things we do, using microscopes in here. But we do other things in here. We've had uh, workshops for building bluebird houses in here. We've ha we have our Christmas uh, wreath making workshop in here. Uh, it's usually too cold outside, so we, we come in here and do it. And, um, We've used this room for, uh, for a lot of different things uh, like that, uh, conferences even. So it's for all ages. I it, mean, it's, it's not just for the little kids. Right. It's for anybody yes, who yes. really wants to use it for yeah. whatever. Yeah. Do we, you put on the programs? We put or? On, well, we put on the programs, but, uh, but we use it for a lot of different things. Uh, we had a, a woman who came to us and said, I'd love to teach a watercolor class, teach people how to paint with watercolors. Great. So we had watercolor classes in our lab. Ah. So uh, and that was uh, that was for adults and people. Uh, actually, one of our students in that class ended up painting a picture of our living roof outside, where we have plants planted on the roof of the old spring house, and it was the prize winner in our art contest last last year or in our art show wow. last summer. So she just learned at these classes and then won first prize in our in our art show in our nature in art show. Now that's impressive. That really is. I like this billboard here too. This oh. where you have all this the frog jokes for the for the kids. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Well, we like to have a lot of fun too. I mean, if kids are having fun, they learn better. And, and well, I so. think grown-ups too like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when I was teaching uh, at Freedom High School, the students sometimes called me Corny Kunkel. So I was pretty. I was known for <laughs> I was known for my corny jokes. <laughs> oh, but that's really neat. I bet the kids really do get into that. Yeah, they do. Well, this is great. Okay. Um, now I guess we uh, can move on to the library? Yes. Right. Okay, follow we'll me. follow you. You're the boss. <laughs>
Dan, I remember this library. You've come a long way with this library. I remember being down here and there were piles of books, no shelves. Um, now it's so very well organized. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, um, I understand most of these books were donated. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about? Almost all these books were donated and about a thousand of them. We have over 5,000 books here. Wow. Uh, uh, over a thousand of them were donated by Donald Heinzelman, who was the founder of the organization that became the Lehigh Gap Nature Center. And so we named the library for, for Mr. Heinzelman. Uh, and the Homer Foundation donated the money for us to buy this shelving and these beautiful uh, ends yes. on, the, on the shelves. I, I love so the, uh, yeah. the leaves. And those are, are all species that are native to the, to the gap here. Hmm. So this is a research library. You don't check the books out. You use them here. We don't have the resources to be chasing after people. But, but um, we believe we have as good a conservation library as any university in the region wow. uh, here w uh, for research on ecology and environment and, and so forth. There are over a thousand different books on birds wow. in, this, in this library. thousand different books. So, and some of them are quite valuable. This is this this set right here is worth two thousand dollars. Those mm -hmm. four books, mm -hmm. and uh, and we also have periodicals back there on the shelves, and we also have archives. We have uh, archives from Mr. Heinzelman and from our history and so forth, housed here in the library. You know, what I find it really interesting too is that all the designs, no matter what it is, is all about this area. Like these particular leaves, mm -hmm. they. They're here. This right. is part of the area. They right. grow on trees that yeah, are exactly. conducive to this area. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that's very, I, I don't know, I just think that's unique. Yeah, we really impressive. tried hard to do that. We, we think this place is unique and we want to make sure that, that people know about it. Well, that very good point. How do we get people, um, you get the word out to people, um, how t can they contact you? Is there a phone number, website? Sure. That if anybody, after they see this uh, video, that if they, Want to come up? They can sure. Contact you. Our phone number is 610-760-8889. Uh, and our website is very simple. It's just lgnc.org. Uh, LGNC is Lehigh Gap Nature Center. So that's how they can contact us. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have today. Um, I'm Representative, State Representative Julie Harhart of the 183rd Legislative District. If you have any questions about what you have just seen here today or any state related uh, issues, please contact my office. The numbers will appear in a moment. That's it for today. Please join us again for Legislative Report.